Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for Off the Press. We'll take you through the pages of the National Dailies and Tunde Kola Wale is on standby to join the conversation. Good morning, Tunde. It's good to have you join us. Good morning, my sister. All right. Uh, let's start off with the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. And on the front page of the Daily Independent, poor pot infrastructure may deny Nigeria Africa continental free trade area. Uh, benefits that's what you have poor port infrastructure may deny nigeria africa continental free trade area benefits that's a bold caption on the daily independent despite recovery economic growth remains fragile the cbn governor emifili godwin emifili is quoted on that you also have omicron variant united kingdom removes nigeria 10 others from travel red list and criminal plans, criminals plan to recruit students into banditry and kidnapping. Uh, this is according to the DSS. Says Namdikanu enjoys full luxury at detention facility. Federal government names groups sponsoring terror organizations. That's on page two. And Senate okays or Senate amends rules and okays simple majority for electing presiding officers senate amends rules and okay simple majority for electing presiding officers no piece of integrity in apc from buhari downwards ayo adebanjo is quoted on that and uh, just before we move away from the daily independent newspaper this morning covid 19 has exposed witnesses of our health institutions that's what the Senate is quoted to say. And you also have INEC commissioners. Buhari finally drops on Noche for Mbu. Uh, that's on, uh, also on the Daily Independent newspaper. Well, that's the much we can take at this point in time. Away from the Daily Independent, we'll move on next to the Punch newspaper. Private sector fears job losses, firms closure over plant taxes and tariffs. With some writers there, MAN, that's the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, NASIMA, NECA, others ask National Assembly to dismiss bills on proposed levies. You can't settle or you can't stifle businesses when other nations are providing incentives to firms. That's according to the OPS, Organized Private Sector. Minister FIRS uh, Ramfak uh, disagreed before reps on revenue, monitoring and enforcement. Above the masthead, reps approved fresh 5.8 billion naira loan, $10 million. Uh, let me take that again. Reps approved fresh $5.86 billion loan, $10 million grant for federal government. UK reverses Nigeria others travel ban cancels quarantine insists on tests federal government or confirms uae's slot for air peace airline awaits a letter nigeria's debt rises by 2.54 trillion naira in three months hits 38.005 trillion naira that's according to the dmo the debt management office more stories beside the masthead NSA lists Islamic groups behind terrorism, six clerics support. Now, fake oil magnate uh, jailed 175 years for defrauding American uh, over 8 million uh, or $629,000. More stories on the front page of the puncher this morning. Obasanjo uh, loses monarch in Ogun, Abiodun Mons, a uh, presidential bid. Tinubu meets Northern Alliance, says consultations on going. Uh, Ogun, 18-year-old student arrested for poisoning female bachelor. Bami Dele peaks Egiti governorship form, says Fayemi deserves worthy successor. Seven travelers killed as bus from Zamfara crashes in Oshun, catches fire. Omicron, a Lagos to begin errant inbound passengers' prosecution to curb spread. Those are all of the stories you can find on the front page 
of the punch this Wednesday morning. All right, let's uh, take a look at the Nation newspaper this morning. The bold caption reads, Lawmakers target of attacks during Yuletide, says DSS. It's a bold caption. And you also have NAS names three terror sponsors. Buhari governors discuss insecurity and 30 travelers abducted. This is uh, uh, the riders underneath the board caption. Shangwo Lu inaugurates 18 classroom and recreational facilities. Uh, there's also a picture to that uh, particular headline. 2023, I am still consulting, says Tunubu. Nigeria orders removed from the United Kingdom red list. Travel ban helpful. Uh, that's a rider underneath the caption. And you also find Nigeria's debt stock now 38.005 trillion naira. And that's it on the Nation newspaper this morning. And the last paper we are reviewing this morning is the leadership. The banner headline at Sam Nda Isaiah's first memorial call for rescinds to electoral bill resonates uh, with several writers uh, to that story. Uh, signing the electoral bill will make votes count, uh, breed credible leadership. That's according to Obaid Bino. Uh, advocate security tax. All right. Uh, Nda Isaiah believed Nigeria could be fixed, according to Kuru. He always put his country first, Lai Mohammed. He did not die in vain, uh, SGF Bas Mustafa. He will be forever remembered by Nigerians Aisha Buhari. He was a great, passionate husband, says wife Zainab. Let's have a personal relationship with God as he had. That's uh, Bishop Jarumai. More stories on the leadership this morning. Uh, Omicron UK removes Nigeria 10 others from travel red list. UAE considered seven flight slots to Nigeria. NSA names uh, group backing terrorists. PMB names new INEC commissioners minister. Military won't recruit repentant terrorists. That's according to the CDS. Four T billion naira equalization debt causing fuel scarcity, according to marketers. Uh, Again, the 2022 fire me has no anointed candidate. That's according to Bamidele. And the last story above the masthead: 2021 against all odds, CBN weathers the storm. Those are all the stories you can find on the front page of the leadership newspaper this Wednesday morning. All right, let's have a uh, Kola Wale join the conversation. Once again, thank you for joining us. We do appreciate and uh, Kola Wale is a legal practitioner. Good morning, Kola Wale. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Thanks for having me. Okay. So uh, let's start off with the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. And one of the captions says, Criminals plan to recruit students into banditry and kidnapping. This is according to the report of the DSS. And of course, there's also another uh, information saying that uh, you have lawmakers as target during this Yuletide period. Yeah, honestly speaking, that's a very strange story to me. In some other parts of the world, when criminals are planning crime, what the security agencies, when they do have information to that effect, is to disrupt the activities of those criminals. It is only here in Nigeria that you find the DSS, the state security service, sometimes the Nigerian police too, they will be raising an alarm from the very rooftop rather than do their work. If they know certain persons are trying to recruit students to kidnap lawmakers and uh, other politicians during the early time, why don't they go for those people who are planning those activities rather than announcing? My guess is that they are not too sure of their fact. That's why they are making the announcement. They are just trying to take a kind of preemptive action. And you are now, of course, aware of the antecedent of the TSS that most times, if not all the time, they never told the truth. 
we were told when they provoked to fight arms and ammunition in Israel in order to overthrow the government, because of that they went and tried to destroy the house and kill two people using pestles. At the time, I think you do a human rights activist. He was accused of killing somebody and prosecuted all the way in Palo when the young man was in Lagos there. Of course, you will get to have been in, in one form of incarceration and harassment for so many months or if not years now because he is accused of uh, planning to overthrow the government of the Federal Republic by the DSS. I don't believe in the DSS. It's not an organization that is credible at all. If I, if I have my way, there should be no DSS in a in, in democratic Nigeria. And you recollect, this was the way they were behaving when Buhari was only the head of state in 1983-85. Such that when the government of Mabangida came in, it had to disband the DSS. They were called the NSO at that period of time. I suspect that faith is also likely to befall the DSS after Buhari might have left office. Because that organization has not concentrated on the mandate for which it was set up. Whether it is committed to harassing, intimidating, and telling bogus lies to Nigeria instead of engaging and carrying out the activities, providing security for the executive government, the judiciary, and whoever may need it. And not start making noise on the 19th and 30th on the basis of this paper. Just yesterday, to their spokesman, Dr. Afunaya, what is it called? He addressed a press comment that they have been giving Namika a red carpet treatment. If Namika has been getting a red carpet treatment, with his lawyer, who his lawyer has been crying that the man is gradually dying instrumentally, so please let's forget it. If they have been permitted that certain person are trying to commit crime, it is the responsibility of the CSS to meet the crimes in the court. In fact, you don't wait until the crime are committed. It's better to disrupt crime from being committed than uh, allow it to be committed. And then you start chasing after the criminal. Please, let's go to a better story. All right, uh, away from that, let's uh, head on to the punch uh, newspaper. The main headline for this morning. Uh, is a fallout from what we heard yesterday that the federal government plans, uh, you know, to tax and levy Nigerians more, you know, come 2020 and their re uh, reactions. Private sector fears uh, job losses, firms closure over plant taxes and tariffs. What are your thoughts, uh, Barrister Kolawali? Well, uh, you and I will remember that a uh, lot of petrol with due respect, including myself, have been making noise and shouting that they're closing our eyes to the mismanagement of the economy, to the massive looting that is going on in all the government parasata, MDAs and uh, organizations, and the ineptitude that we have seen with the management of the nation's resources. The wholesale borrowing of money from wherever this government could find it. That at the end of the day, the Nigerian people will be the one to pay for the profligacy, for the political activities of the Nigerian politicians. Now the chicken is coming home to roost. They've mismanaged the economy. They've borrowed money, which is never used to execute whatever project they, 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 they borrow the money for. They haven't managed the economy in such a manner in which the economy could go and pay for its own debt. We are fighting a war and relying on all sale and position of arms and ammunition to fight the war. We are borrowing money. We are forgotten that when the Nigerian nation fought the civil war in 67 to 70, there were people in charge of the economy who made sure that Nigeria didn't borrow a single penny to prosecute that war. And the war will see a war one way or the other. So, why would anybody be levying charges and penalties with all the all manners of taxes that is already being imposed on Nigeria? They try to increase VAT, the community tax are there, 
educational ladies out there, all money, the, 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 the vehicle registration uh, fees have been increased. You cannot use water the way you like because you pay through your nose in some places for the way it is available. Look at the PSN. Look at the kind of jumbo fee that we are getting from all those organizations. Yes, the minimum wage remains at 30,000 level. And then you are also planning to increase quite. The, gas, the cost of gas has gone up astronomically. So that people have gone back to using wood and charcoal, which they stopped using so many years ago. And then you say you now want to impose levy charges and all manner of that attack. That is not fair. Rather, one would have expected that this government would trim down the cost of governance first. And we have had the opportunity to do it in the return to this Hebrew rule 20 years ago or thereabouts. I keep emphasizing too, the cost of executive contracts in Nigeria is one of the highest, if not the highest in the world. What have they done with regard to reducing the cost of contract? Every construction project in Nigeria today is denominated in billion. A kilometer of road will cost about 15, uh, 10, 6 billion. When the material for the road construction is not important, you get the cement here, you get the granite here, you get the sand here. The only thing you probably import is the iron, and then maybe you rent equipment. So why would the cost of road construction be denominated in billion? I wonder what they didn't do it in billion. Number that we never executed the road project in billion. Nah, Tapa Paliwa didn't do it. Compare the cost at which the cocoa house in the pattern was built, and then the high rises that we are having in the recent time, how much the government of Nigeria, both at the state level and the local government level, and at the federal level, are spending on those projects. It is not fair. In my humble opinion, the Nigerian people should resist any attempt to impose further levy taxes and charges on them. The government must change down the cost of governance for assess the issue of high cost of contract, and then the massive, massive corruption and investment that is going on in all the public places, right from local government level to state level to federal level. There is no day you open the paper even today that will not have had that somebody has uh, battle or investment 1 billion or 2 billion or 2 billion. Nobody even embezzles millions anymore. That is the direction to go, not to start imposing levies on people. All right, Tunde Kolawale, uh, let's move away from that discourse now and, and uh, still staying with the Daily Independent newspaper. Federal government names groups sponsoring terror organizations. Sounds like good news and, and just maybe, uh, you know, the, the body language of uh, the president has changed and we probably might just see some persons being prosecuted. I'm going to take that again, please. Federal government names groups sponsoring terror organizations. Mm. Well, my sister, that story is not too different from the story of the PSS. Why would you be naming terror organizations if you don't know them? People who have uh, made our lives uneasy, who will not allow us to see with both eyes closed, and you say you know them, and you merely name them, you don't go after them, and take how long it has taken them to name all these so-called people as totally banditry and terrorism. The issue was there so many months ago, and the Nigerian people have been saying, if the Dubai, the authorities in Dubai can say, look, this and this person are sponsoring terrorism in Nigeria, and they took them to court and jail them, and try to block their means, uh, their cash trade. What was our own response? Our attorney general said, the judgment in Dubai will be studied and ensure that those people are taken through the due process of law. Rather than ask the Dubai authority, give all the details of the people, the names of the people, the organization that we know, that are sponsoring and promoting banditry in Nigeria. So that we can also take action against them internally. 
We have been unable to do that. So it is just now the National Security Advisor is waking up to the reality of saying it is also a limitation that has been behind the sponsorship of terrorism in Nigeria. What security people do is to disrupt going there, arrest those who are for sponsoring this banditry, and take, to, take them to the, 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 the mills of law as civilized people. Prosecute them in the court of compliance judicial. Let them have their say in court. If they find guilty, they are convicted and jailed. If not, they are left to court. So why stand on the roof up and start saying it is this country and those other organizations that are sponsoring terrorism in Nigeria? The whole thing that they have a very childish coming from an organization or a set of people who have no political will to really go after this criminal. Rather, they go after the petty criminal, the Yahoo Yahoo boys, and those who criticize government. That is the people they go after. Whereas we do no certain parties are contributing money to sponsor the terrorism. Arms and ammunition are being buried to Boko Haram and some of these bandits. You ask yourself, Boko Haram and the bandits, they are stationed in a landlocked area. They have no access to the sea. They have no access to good roads. They are confined to the Lakers region. How does arms and ammunition of such caliber get to them? If certain Nigerian allies are not the ones selling arms and ammunition to them, these foreign bodies are not selling arms and ammunition to them. What efforts have the CSS, the NSC, and all the different organizations that we have in Nigeria taken to destroy the arms supply of these banditry, of these bandits? What have they done to cut off food supply to the areas in which the bandits are operating? Imagine if you are able to block arms and ammunition to those places, if you are able to block the supply of food to those places, if you are able to restrict the movement of vehicles going in and out of those places, the one will have been half one. And also ask yourself, if the Boko Haram people are manufacturing rocket launchers, they are manufacturing bombs and all that. Why is Nigeria still importing most of the arms and ammunition that they are using to fight the bandits, that they are using to fight Boko Haram? Why can't we manufacture those things locally? If Boko Haram could do it, some of our industry could be reconfigured to produce arms and ammunition. I am sure I have no doubt in my mind that a company like Innocent Motor can produce most of the arms and ammunition that we will use to fight the Boko Haram. If the ordinary blacksmith in Benin State, in Niger State, in Kogi State can manufacture AK-47 that has leather as the one that is imported from Russia, why would it be impossible for we as Nigerians, for the Nigerian army to set up industry to produce arms and ammunition? The truth is certain persons are sympathetic to the cause of the bandits and to the cause of the, the artists. And so they are afraid, they don't have the political will to take them on. Add on so All that right. this war can be won within the shortest space of time. All right, Barrister Kolawali, let's uh, move on. Uh, uh, let's stay with the Punch uh, newspaper, although most of the dailies um, you know, have um, that particular headline. But let's just uh, take it from the Punch and the way it was captioned. Uh, it's basically on the red list and the Omicron. UK reverses Nigeria orders travel ban, cancels quarantine, insists on test. The federal government uh, confirms UAE slots for air peace. Airline awaits letter. Okay, so those are the stories I just want you to react on. They are all related to the Omicron and the rest. Yes, that's a quid pro quo story. Let me tell you a very small uh, story of my own. My cousin just came back from the UK about uh, two days ago. And he said when he was coming, inside the uh, Boeing 707 or thereabouts, that can carry about 400 people, there were only about 15 or 17 of them inside that aircraft. So that the aircraft that came from Britain came in empty. The one that had been coming from UAE and Dubai and all that too, have also been coming in empty. The implication of that is that uh, the British Airways and all the other airlines that are still coming to Nigeria, they are running as a lot. So I am sure they would have cried to their own government. So look, this ban that you have placed on Nigeria, most of our passengers 
we we get it on this route. And if they approach the authorities and all that, that might be the reason why the authorities in Britain, UAE, and some of these places now want to leave the embargo on Nigerian travelers uh, coming in and out of their, of their country. The lesson to take from this is that, uh, look, uh, international politics is a quote pro thing. You must have your own area of strength compared to your own opponent's area of strength, too. It is when they know that you also could hit them or that you have something that you could also use to punish them. That is when they begin to respect you. That is why we need to strengthen all aspects of our economy, make sure that our airlines are valid and they're able to fly to anywhere in the world. Imagine a tiny country like Ethiopia. It has the best airline in the whole of Africa. And that is about what they rely on for generating foreign exchange for the country. If I am told that 35 to 40 percent of the foreign exchange that Ethiopia earns comes from their airline and the coffee industry. Don't Nigeria has the potential to grow, process coffee and sell abroad with 200 million people and all the pilots and engineers and expertise that we have all over the country? Why has it become impossible for us to run a parallel airline that will compete with UAE, that will compete with a, a British Caledonia? I will compete to any of the best airlines that you have in the world. Corruption and inefficiency is at the bottom of it. So, thank God that uh, the British people are redeeming that. I have another cousin who's been given a job in the UK who, because of this shutdown, because of home call, will not go to Britain to resume the work. We should go here from Nigeria. So, I think that should be in the best interest of our people. If uh, more slots are given to quit their life, if the people over there in Britain and some of these other places will also reveal this their blanket ban on Nigeria, because nobody has been able to establish scientifically that Omicron has its origin in Nigeria, not even in South Africa. But when there is anything bad like AIDS, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, um, COVID, and what have you. They pass the book, they ascribe it to us, forgetting that they live a more dirty habit that generates those things when compared to us. All right. That's uh, my take on that. Okay, uh, let's also go back to the Daily Independent. And uh, quickly on that, you have Nigeria's total debt hits 38.005 trillion naira. Honestly speaking, my sister. <laughs> Each time I read the story of the death profile of the Nigerian nation, my heart bleeds. Why does it bleed? I have tried to compare the quantum of money that we have borrowed in the last 20 or 6 years thereabout and the infrastructures that we have on the ground. Today, Charlie, in my humble opinion, there is a wide gap from the money that we have borrowed, and what we have said we use the money to do. Secondly, Nigeria has also set a record with regards to this borrowing. We are probably the only nation in the world that borrows money to pay salaries and allowances of indolent politicians in the anger zone. When you borrow money, you should borrow money to build infrastructure that will be able to pay back the money that we have borrowed. But the exception is Nigeria. The minute the money is borrowed, it will just sweet out the way. Just like money that has been returned to us. Somebody somewhere too will sit down on it, and then they will, they will release it. And then generation yet on bond will be made to pay for this uh, money that has been borrowed. I will give you a short story too. I mean, next time, if you give me the time. When Chief of Bafemi Awulowo was appointed as a, like a prime minister and then a minister of finance on that board after he was released from the Calabar prison, eh? uh, after his uh, so-called treasonable uh, trials and all that, the first thing Chief Awulowo said was to see that what are our best sources of generating revenue? And uh, he identified the port, he identified the cocoa industry. And some of these, he also identified where the loopholes are coming from. 
And he requested some good people, good leaders who are responsible, who have integrity, taking me some young men who are honest, who are not corrupt, who are prudent in management of resources. And people like Alaji Sheikh Musa were recommended to him. So he posted these prudent people to the post authority, to the cocoa industry, and some of these other places, uh, money earning, uh, revenue generating organization for the federal government. And he asked those people to preside over those places to manage them. And those people who were able to block the loophole. And before you know it, the revenue profile of the federal government at that period in time began to show up. And with that, we were able to do so many things. Prosecute the war, uh, provide food for ourselves, continue the infrastructure development without borrowing money. What concrete efforts have you seen that the President administration has made with regard to identify the revenue generating uh, uh, arms of the government, putting diligent prudent and honest people in there, and blocking all the loopholes that have been the drain pipe of the nation's resources? Nothing to that to check. In fact, I say it times without number, and I challenge the economic, the chief economic at the federal level and at the state level to a debate. Yeah. Almost 70% of money that is appropriated by the National Assembly as budget on a yearly basis end up in the pocket of individuals. They don't end up being used to provide the facilities, the infrastructure that those budgets or those monies were appropriated for. They are three times a week. Just last week, you and I were reading a story of many billion the amount of COVID finding its way into the pockets or into the account of an individual. You don't run a nation like this. If the Korea had run uh, uh, Singapore, the way we are running it, the kind of development that has taken place in those countries today wouldn't have been there. The bottom line is that we don't have serious, intelligent, prudent leaders in this part of the world. What we have are rulers who behave like the monarchy, that they can do anything, they can spend anything, and you know in Yoruba land, they say you don't question the monarchy. The monarchy owns everything and everybody, and whatever they do cannot be challenged. That has been the attitude of our political life, that whatever they do, nobody is nobody prepared to challenge them. That is to say, there is no room for accountability, even in a democracy. Honestly oh. speaking, this death profile is an embarrassment, and I do hope that when this government will leave for office, we will not only set up a, a panel to look at all these death profiles and bring to book those who have put us in this mess, and then we also set up another panel to look at human rights abuses and those who have engaged in extrajudicial killing, harassment, torture. And then the disappearances of a citizen. You remember that Yata, a university lecturer in Kano, who was an assistant critic of government. Up to today, he has not been found. He just disappeared. People went to his house uh, in the evening in the presence of the wife and children, took him away. And they just want to ask him questions until today. That young man has not returned for the past two years. So we need a very, a very serious, we have a serious assignment in front of us. After this government, this rogue government, who have left office. All right, uh, we must say a very big uh, thank you to you, uh, Barista uh, Tsundi Kolawale. That's as much as we can take on this particular segment um, of the press. Uh, what we're taking uh, today in history, today is December 15th. What happened uh, some years back? I will bring that to you right away. Stay with us. <music>